h of x is equal to 2 over x plus 2 plus 4 over x squared plus 5 minus 18 over x squared plus 5 times x plus 2. I need to show that that can be simplified to be 2x over x squared plus 5. So we're getting a common denominator. The first fraction, I'm going to times this by the x squared plus 5. The second fraction, I'm going to times that by x plus 2. And the third fraction, I'm going to leave completely alone because I can see that that has already got the same common denominator as my first two fractions. So, we've got a common denominator of x squared plus 5 times x plus 2. And the numerator is 2 lots of the x squared plus 5 plus 4 lots of the x plus 2 minus the 18. Simplifying that numerator now. So just expanding those brackets, we've got 2x squared plus 10 plus 4x plus 8 minus 18. I notice that the 10 plus 8 minus 18 is all just a zero. And then I notice that I'm just left with the 2x squared plus 4. Now I can factorise 2x outside of that. So I get 2x plus 2. And now I notice that the x plus 2s cancel out. So I get as my answer, which is what I needed to show, the 2x over x squared plus 5. So that's part A done. Part B. Hence, or otherwise, find h dash in its simplest form. So I need to differentiate. I notice that this is a quotient. I've got the 2x that's being divided by the x squared plus 5. So I need to use the quotient rule to differentiate this. So let's let u be 2x and let's let b be x squared plus 5. So u dash would be 2, v dash would be 2x. And remembering that the quotient rule is u dash v minus v dash u over v squared. So let's apply that in this case. So we have u dash times v minus v dash times u all over v squared. Expanding the brackets on the numerator then we get 2x squared plus 10 minus 4x squared which will become 10 minus 2x squared over the x squared plus 5 all squared. And that's my answer for part B. <clears throat> We're then shown figure 2, which shows a graph of the curve with the equation y equals h of x. And part C says to calculate the range of h of x. Range is the set of y values that this can possibly be. So let's look at the graph. I can see it starts here at 0 and goes up to its highest point here. And then it goes down and then gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It seems to be toward, tending towards 0 after that. So I can see that its smallest y value is 0 here. And its biggest y value is whatever that y value there is. So straight away I can say that h of x has to be greater than or equal to 0 from the lower value and less than or equal to the upper value. I'm not quite sure the upper value is yet at the moment though. I want to know what's the y value here. 
Well, I know at this point it's a stationary point, so I know the gradient equals zero. So if I take my gradient function that I worked out in part b, this thing, and make it equal to zero, that's going to help me to work out the coordinates of that maximum point. So let's do that. Let's take my gradient function. And make it equal to zero. As long as the numerator is equal to zero, as long as 10 minus 2x squared equals zero, then the whole thing will equal zero. Or you could just think of it as multiplying both sides by that fraction. Therefore, 2x squared is going to equal 10. So x squared is going to equal 5. So x would equal either plus or minus root 5. It can't be minus root 5, though, because x has to be a positive number. And also we can clearly see that x is going to be a positive number there. So we know that when x is equal to root 5, we're going to have a maximum. If I take that root 5 and substitute it in to the function to work out the y coordinate. So 2 root 5 over root 5 squared plus 5. This is 2 root 5 over 5 plus 5. So 2 root 5 over 10 or root 5 over 5. That is the maximum y coordinate. And therefore that is what the range is going to go up to. So that's my answer for part C.